So if you're just now tuning in, this is a look at the radar for us as of about 11.05, and we just have a couple of light showers that are passing through. Again, it is nothing too significant here at the current moment. Let's take a look at the power outages. Yeah, we've seen these numbers go up and down here over the last few hours just because of how windy it is outside. Kind of give you a closer look here inside of East Texas. Uh, highest total right now is in Gregg County, and that's where we have about 3,000 customers that are without power at this moment uh, in Smith County about a thousand we've seen the numbers just go up and down this is all driven by the wind energy that we have here in the atmosphere so we'll need to uh, keep an eye on this because this may lead to some power outages that are not related to thunderstorms it is just so windy outside here at the moment we'll talk more about the winds too here momentarily 2,000 uh, folks without power in Van Zandt County 600 in wood Rusk get about 700. Um, I'm going to add this um, this image to our main weather story, the one you clicked on here to watch. Um, we'll add this to the story. That way you can see some of the latest numbers by county as we continue through the rest of the night. All right, look, this is our camera in long view. And we are definitely seeing just how strong the wind is at this point. That flag is whipping around. Now, the flags that are usually up on the higher building, I'll zoom this view back out so you can see it. Those flags are down at this point. Let me uh, tilt up on the camera. There we go. Yeah, those flags are down at this time. So we're really just kind of looking at the uh, flags that we have uh, kind of close to the ground level, uh, very close to downtown. So a good view there of just how windy that it is outside at this point. <clears throat> temperature at 74 and this south breeze continuing at about 23 there are our peak wind gusts anywhere between about 35 to almost 45 mile an hour gusts and we're likely to see these gusts continue through the rest of tonight notice how futurecast on the wind gusts here does keep us in that 25 35 mile an hour range perhaps slightly higher and then as the storms move in we'll see the gusts begin to pick up just a bit more as we get closer to daybreak tomorrow morning and shortly thereafter and once the storms pull out the wind gusts are not going to let up. We continue with a west and northwest wind, and that will allow gusts getting up to 30 miles an hour from a different direction as the cooler, drier air is anticipated to move in. All right, back to our storm threat for us going into early Wednesday morning. We are still looking at damaging wind gusts and maybe a tornado or two that cannot be ruled out. Those are our top weather concerns. A pocket or two of heavy rain to lead to flash flooding appears unlikely, but some heavy downpours to lead to ponding on roadways appears likely, so we'll keep an eye on that. Hail threat overall is going to stay relatively low also. All right, so we'll put this into motion. This is a look at future cast. This is the same model that you will find. Let me open it up here on our East Texas Storm Team app. Okay, same model that you'll see on this app is uh, what I'm going to show you right now. And I'm just going to pull it up just so, uh, so we can take a closer look at it as well as we see the line that moves in. Okay, so there's midnight. We've got some rain and storms uh, northwest of DFW, but most of the actual thunderstorms are still out into the west areas, west central Texas, coming out of the Concho Valley, uh, heading to the east toward the hill country there. All right, we'll fast forward in time. Here you can notice by about 4 or 5 a.m., thunderstorms are beginning to increase. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you how Futurecast shows that here on the app. And it seems to be fairly accurate. You can notice how we have, hopefully you can see that there, how some of the storms are just lining up um, with what we're seeing here on this app. So um, we anticipate these storms to increase closer to daybreak tomorrow. I just think the next few hours, things are going to remain quiet. It's just windy, but as far as severe storms, it appears very unlikely uh, at this current point based off of everything that we have seen. There's 6 a.m. line of storms from Mount Pleasant coming down northwest of Palestine. Notice how we have some notches here. That's what we'll need to watch for 
Strong damaging wind gusts are possible, but also an isolated tornado or two cannot be ruled out either. So this line is very intense as it moves through. That's why the wind gust threat is going to be the more primary concern. Getting toward about 8 o'clock, still looking at some heavier rain, but it's working its way to the east. I would anticipate some very dark skies tomorrow morning. And if you have kiddos that are going to have to be out at the bus stop, if there's any way possible to have them in your car or maybe for them to wait at home and for the bus to come and pick them up. It is just not going to be a good idea to be out in the rain and in the lightning as we have these storms moving through. 9 a.m. Storms are beginning to move toward the Arklatex area and then work their way into portions of Louisiana. However, they slow down just a tad. That may allow for some storms to strengthen perhaps across portions of Toledo Bend before they're all out of here, no later than between noon and one o'clock. And then once they are out of here, yeah, this is where the bigger severe threat is anticipated. Those storms work their way to the east as we get into the late afternoon and evening hours there going into the Wednesday. For us, we've got decreasing clouds, but a pretty strong north wind is anticipated. Now, I wanted to compare that with our high-resolution model, the HRRR, and it seems to have some fairly good agreement. So there's about 1 a.m. storms west of DFW. Let's get to about 5 a.m. where we started to see that line move in. And it's fairly accurate. There are some differences, though, like uh, we had the line a little bit more oriented, a bit more to the east in Franklin County, coming back down into northwest Anderson County. Those are minor details, but the, even the high resolution model, make sure I'm looking at the right one, yeah, that's updated hourly, is similar to what we're seeing with our in house model as well. So, that leading edge, that's going to be our primary concern as the thunderstorms pass through. So that's why we're looking at wind gusts or an isolated tornado to develop here. As far as our overall storm timing, we're looking at our west-northwest counties, 4 to 7 a.m., 6 to 10 in areas of green, and then between 9 a.m. and noon for areas to the east, although we anticipate by noon just a few brief showers may be left over, but then they should be clearing out fast as the storms really ramp up and move off to the east. So that's a look at your general storm timing. Make sure everybody can see that there, see your area. Okay, so that's what we're generally looking at here at this point. So we want to keep an eye on everything as we get into early tomorrow morning as the radar will, will still have some stronger thunderstorms associated with it and those are working their way uh, to the east here uh, at this time. Let me get some water real quick, stand by. checking a couple of things here see if we got anything new here in the model data it doesn't look like we have much change here at this point so this is going to be the line that we're watching for kind of the waiting game here at this moment and curious to see what the storm prediction center is going to do it looks like they already put out the watch it appears let me uh let's put this on the timestamp here Okay, so that's out until 1 a.m. So that's only um, that's not that's not the new watch there. That was a looks like a local addition to the current watch that was already in play. Let me check that with the uh, Norman, Oklahoma office. Okay, yeah. So the weather service in Norman. Excuse me they updated that severe thunderstorm watch so we do not have the newest watch yet from the storm prediction center uh, however <clears throat> they were fairly adamant about saying that by uh, 11 30 we would we would see a new watch out sometimes it does take a few minutes longer because there's coordination that has to be done with other forecast offices but the new watch that you see here that was a local extension it appears uh, over portions from Oklahoma from the Norman office coming down toward the Red River. So if that's happening, I'm really curious to see what the next areas are that may be in this new watch. I would definitely think Sherman, Bonham, Paris, but how far south we'll go, that's a question that we'll just have to see when they actually put out the watch. So we should have that out here 
uh, in the next, say, 15, no more than 30 minutes, I would anticipate. Next 15, no more than 30 minutes. Uh, let me grab some information. Let me also switch over to a different mode here because what I want to do is I want to put maybe perhaps give us a storm track on the thunderstorms that are coming through but that's going to involve me f understanding the storm motion excuse me so let me get some information there on that okay moving northeast at 30 <clears throat> it appears let's see <laughs> east at 40 so we still have a little ways to go in terms of the thunderstorm threat here um, the storms just aren't moving too fast about 35 to 40 miles an hour and it looks a little bit faster than what we've seen here so let me see if I can do some uh, estimated times of arrival here kind of track this leading edge and <laughs> it may take a little while for us to do this so we'll start at about 39 get that up to the max ranking okay so then from there kinda of draw this out that way it can help us out just a little bit more but it may be maybe a little difficult to do to get it that far out but you kind of get the idea that we still have definitely a big way to go before we start to see any sort of thunderstorms that are significant to move into East Texas uh, let's see weather service Continues the wind advisory. That's something we just got pushed out. So if you, are, if you have our East Texas Storm Team app, I just got a notification uh, about that. Uh, so wind advisory continues here for a lot of us, and that will run until at least 7 a.m. tomorrow morning or until 1 o'clock uh, on uh, Wednesday afternoon. So, yeah, so this is what we're seeing here at this point. So everything is still relatively quiet for right now, but... I plan to have more updates for you. Um, I'll probably even do a Facebook Live where we'll jump outside for a couple of minutes. That way we can look and see too what's happening there uh, as well. It's always interesting just to see how all of this comes together. Okay, if you have a question, feel free to uh, give me a tweet um, uh, on Twitter, Marcus underscore WX. You can go to my Facebook page as well uh, and uh, we can chat there. Uh, and I'll just continue to provide updates here for the next couple of hours. I'm here until uh, Carson arrives, and then Carson and Andrew will take over and get us through the morning hours. Um, we've got to rest. <laughs> um, but at the same time, uh, also still going to monitor those storms very, very carefully. We, can't, we don't want to let our guard down on these. Even though this is not a widespread threat, you certainly could still have uh, some severe thunderstorms. So finally, just leave you with the East Texas Storm Team app. If you don't have it, go ahead and download it now. I really do enjoy this app. Uh, let me open it back up and make sure we have a couple of things here. Uh, this may be a little bit hard to see because it's, so, it's white as well. Let me see what I can do. Okay, so if you're on the home screen, you want to make sure you have your safety net alerts turned on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Nope, that's not going to work. So yeah, make sure you have your make sure you have your alerts turned on. That way, that way we're able to, you're able to get the latest weather alerts. Okay, those are so important to have. All right. Uh, this is the beginning of more updates that we'll have through the night. So I'll be back on. Uh, the plan is to be back on, let's say, probably around 12, 15, 12, 30. That'll be, we'll, we'll shoot for that next one there. 12, 15, 12, 30. That's when we'll have our next weather update. So I'll be able to uh, come back on and give you an update then. We definitely should have the watch already in place. But as soon as we get that, I'll post that on social media. And if it's for any of our counties, We'll definitely get the push alert out to you on the mobile app. All right, thanks for taking time to stop by, and um, we'll chat again between 12.15 and 12.30.